Hello and good night, Renan Tobago, and welcome to another edition of Psychology Live. Tonight we are talking about the psychology of work, the workplace. And I have two guests that I will introduce in a while um, who are well qualified to talk about the workplace and uh, some of the demands, trends, issues in the workplace. Let me advise you, as usual, that we are streaming live um, at gisltd.tt backslash tv-4. We are also on Facebook at uh, facebook.com backslash our tv4. You can get us on Twitter at our tv4 hashtag psychology live. And our phone numbers are 675-8747 and 675-8749. And the lines will be open probably after this second segment. So it's a great pleasure tonight to have um, two ladies on set who are going to help us discuss some of the issues around um, psychology of the workplace. And to my immediate left is Ms. Leslie Tony, who is a clinical psychologist and an old colleague <laughs> from college in the United States. And Leslie is a clinical case worker, um, case manager, psychotherapist. Uh, she is also a lecturer at UWI and did supervision there in the psychology program. Presently, she is an EAP counselor at Petrotrin EAP Services Limited. Um, and she treats um, folks who come to the EAP, and she treats with both adults and adolescents around issues of varying issues, including anxiety, depression, um, trauma, substance abuse, and other more serious types of um, incidents. And uh, to Leslie's left and facing me directly is um, a former boss of mine, um, Mrs. is Linda Besso, ex-executive <laughs> director of the Employers Consultative Association. And she has been there since 1995. And I have her permission to say that this is her last month of work after 19 plus years at the ECA since she is retiring next month. Um, and she will tell us some more about the ECA and, and its role as an NGO, representing employers in Trinidad and Tobago. So welcome, ladies, to Psychology Live. Thank you. Thank um, you. Linda, starting with you, could you tell us a little bit about the ECA? And I know it started in 1960 with 21 firms as part of my research, but I'm sure it has many more companies now as part of its um, mandate. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me, and let me um, thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah. And um, as I go into the, a little bit down history, in the history of the Employers Consultative Association, let me say that when the Employers Consultative Association started in 1960 with 21 companies, um, it was as a result of the um, trade unions and the, the, you know, the trade unions were really very, very vibrant in those days and there was not um, a comparative employer um, organization. business organization to match the trade unions and so 21 businesses decided mm -hmm. they needed to have um, an equal voice mm -hmm. for employers in industrial relations and the Employers Consultative Association was born. Right. Um, it, has its, its, it went through its normal life cycles and um, in 1995 when I took up the um, reins of the ECA, mm -hmm. there were just 72 companies because it had risen to 288 and then wow. they, lost the, they lost the membership. Um, and that has to do, and we won't go through all the history why that happened. But today, um, the Employers Consultative Association has on its register over 740 okay. companies' membership. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And this would um, go across different industries or strictly? All all yeah. sectors, all, all sectors. sizes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have over 700 plus. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I know we'll get into it a little later. You have um, different sections that offer training and yeah. HR solutions yes. 
and so on the employers. And that's the employer solution. Well, the um, subsidiary of the Employers Consultative Association mm -hmm. um, is the Employer Solution Center, mm -hmm. which provides all services to all employers. To your the ECA mm -hmm. can only service its membership, okay. but the Employer Solution Center can. Um, it has the, the, um, the mandate that it can serve all employers, okay. including the membership. Right. So you don't have to be a member to, to be serviced by the that's employer. That's right. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Wonderful. So, Leslie, tell us yes. a little bit about the Petroton EAP, one of the oldest EAPs in the country. Yes. So, oh. Petroton EAP Service is Limited, mm. uh, the uh, short name is Peepsil, Peepsil is yes. a subsidiary of mm. Petroton. Mm. Uh, we get that question all the time. Mm. Um, Although Petrogen is our largest client, we mm -hmm. actually have 18 contracted clients and have served uh, a couple hundred uh, agencies over the past two years. So that they have a history mm -hmm. of working with a number of organizations um, to provide employee assistance program services. So mm -hmm. uh, training, uh, counseling, psychotherapy, financial planning, retirement mm -hmm. planning mm -hmm. um, for any of these organizations that have decided that they want to make uh, some sort of counseling and psychotherapeutic interventions mm -hmm. and offer a, a benefit for their employers. So for the benefit of the viewing public audio who may not know what an EAP is, mm -hmm. a definition of an EAP, Employee Assistance Program, and, okay. and what well, you do? Yeah. So, so the history of employee assistance mm -hmm. programs is really about employers looking to find ways to address emotional problems and how mm -hmm. they affect productivity mm -hmm. in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And so they began largely dealing with substance abuse mm -hmm. and, and the effect that that had on workers. Mm -hmm. However, they've evolved considerably. Mm -hmm. Actually, in the last year and a half, I think I've had probably three clients who came in where substance abuse was the primary concern. Mm -hmm. For the most part, we have people who come in who are dealing with emotional distress, mm -hmm. um, depressive symptoms, not necessarily depression as a diagnosis, but mm -hmm. depressive symptoms, mm -hmm. um, adjustment problems, mm -hmm. uh, change of life issues, coping with grief and loss, uh, separation, uh, discord in the marriage, difficulty at school, going to a new job, adjusting to parenthood, a number of things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a diverse array of uh, staff people. Uh, mm -hmm. There are four clinical psychologists, two part-time, two full-time. There are about seven social workers. We have a marriage and family therapist. We have people who are trained in counseling psychology. So we have a range of people doing counseling work. Mm -hmm. And then we have people who do like retirement planning. Mm -hmm. So everybody's coming in with a slightly different uh, mm -hmm. training background, different yeah. theoretical orientation, and they have different approaches to problems. And they may mm -hmm. see slightly different groups of people. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, because of my background working in community mental health in, in public health, mm -hmm. I sometimes get a lot of the cases that me, might be considered more... Um, challenging. Well, I wouldn't say challenging. <laughs> I, I, I tend to get ones where I can definitely give clinical. Uh, a clinical diagnosis. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but also because of the location mm -hmm. where I work, mm -hmm. I get everybody. I get rare. I work rare. I work primarily in Point Fortin and okay. Santa Flora. Right. So, so we have offices. Mm -hmm. Yes. So mm -hmm. we have offices in Port in Port of Spain, mm -hmm. Point of Pear, Point Fortin, Santa Flora. Right. We also sometimes see people in Guayagayari and Pinal and Forest mm -hmm. Reserve. Because mm -hmm. those are the primary areas that you find petrogen mm -hmm. workers. Right. But because of where I am, I see predominantly Petrogen workers. So I also, in addition to getting um, some of the more psychiatric conditions, I mm -hmm. get the relational issues, the dissatisfaction mm -hmm. with life. I get the <laughs> stress at work, right. st life stress that's affecting work. Would and so the, the mm -hmm. other thing mm -hmm. to, to, to emphasize mm -hmm. is, uh, because sometimes people quibble with this, Employee assistance programs are brief therapy programs. So mm -hmm. we provide usually... Yes, so sure it's, it's, it's the, the <coughs> general thing in the industry is six to eight sessions. And mm -hmm. for us, for the most part, it's usually eight sessions per issue per mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have three major issues that you want to come in for, right. you can potentially see someone for 24, <laughs> issue, for 24 sessions. Right, right. Um, but it is how to manage an issue within eight 
eight sessions. Right. So these are people who are generally working mm -hmm. and something that is distressing in their life is affecting their ability to function effectively at work. Okay. And so uh, the, the employer clients, the employer agencies have taken it as a priority to give a benefit to their employees mm -hmm. that we will provide you with a counseling service where you can seek help so that you can come back to work and be productive. Right. So I know a lot of organizations have introduced wellness programs yeah. um, you know productivity is on the bottom line of course mm -hmm. is the major issue and so management has evolved over the years mm -hmm. from leave your issues at the door when you get to Just work can't. right which was you know an anachronism by itself mm -hmm. to now companies and organizations understanding that if they have happy well um, employees, then clearly it affects the bottom line. Mm. Um, what has been the evolution, Linda, in terms of the ECA? And, and well, obviously, you have departments that, that you know, offer these kinds of services in terms of the ECA. So what has been the evolution as you have seen it over the 19 <laughs> plus years? Yeah. Um, well, you know, we, we, you asked me about the evolution of this whole issue of the EAP wellness, and yes. the wellness and all of yes, that. But wellness. it's gone from, from the reaction to mm -hmm. proact being proactive. Proactive, yes. And, um, but it has to do with, in, with the individual, you know, in terms of, yes, we promote it. You encourage your members to promote wellness. It's big. Right. It's the, 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 I think the Ministry of Health has moved, has moved to promoting right. wellness, wellness and all, programs, you know, yes. and all of that. And um, so much so there is a, an interna there's a national day of wellness in September. Right. And that has been, you know, all been through the, the efforts of the Ministry of Health and right. it has filtered right through um, all business organization, all employers are asked to do it. Mm -hmm. um, you do have within the organization, within my own organization, which is just a, a small staff of 30, okay. we do have a wellness committee. Yeah. So, you know, they, they would try to do things like dance classes and, and every ever so often they would send a, a, health, a health bulletin and, and that kind of thing. So it's just really encouraging people right. to live a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, what it does is you also manage stress better. Mm -hmm. And um, we have to be concerned that a human being can't just leave, some, leave the ills at home or leave their problems at home and come to work. Right. It, they, they have to work, they come with it. So mm -hmm. you ha as, you, as the employer, you have to assist in mm -hmm. this regard. Mm -hmm. And um, so we have moved from reacting to be proactive. Right, be more proactive, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's, I, I know being involved in an EAP myself, that the statistics, and this is in the U.S., of course, where, you know, they have statistics, that for every $1 that you spend on an EAP, you get a $3 return. And this is kind of universal. I mean, I don't know what it's like here because EAPs are, are not, I mean, they're popular but not as well known. No. And interestingly, um, probably accepted and engaged by most, principally, a lot of foreign companies. Yes. Right? Because of their cultures abroad. Um, and of course, some of the larger organizations, mm -hmm. your banks and you know mm -hmm. industrial companies and so on. But um, I wondered one of the, 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 the banners that we have used um, for promoting this show is culture eats strategy for breakfast. <laughs> and so I wanted to get around to our local culture, you know, which is quite unique in terms of um, you know, work attitudes, attitudes to work, um, stress, as Leslie was talking about, you, you also mentioned, the different stresses that we have here in Trinidad and Tobago. I don't think people realize how stressful Trinidad is, just Has starting become. with the traffic on mornings. Yeah. 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 And so what are the challenges that, that you all have faced as, as employers in, in terms of that? Well, the issue of absenteeism, absenteeism. is big, you yeah. know what I mean? The issue of being um, punctuality. Mm. And I mean, how do, you, how do you discipline a worker who arrives late to work consistently, but you know, the, the workers coming from deep south, the traffic jams, and, and it's, it, you know, you have to accept, they always say, yeah. well, is it traffic? Yeah. It's either the traffic or sometimes I had a, a worker who said to me, but Mrs. Besser, if I don't have water, how do I come to work? Yeah. You know, it is really, um, how, how can, because and, and I feel and I feel really very concerned that mm. 
as employers, we, ex we have expectations, but um, really, does the, the culture provide or allow their workers mm -hmm. to do what they want in their time to be at work and, pro be, and to be productive right. when there are so many you stresses, know, stresses mm -hmm. in, in life. It's children, it's family, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's all kinds of, of, of um, stresses. Right. Um, it's, it's interesting because um, <laughs> the, and, and I, you know, again, we don't keep statistics here in this country in terms of just trying to get some traffic statistics just for this show, just in terms of the movement of people in the Port of Spain. And that was challenging in terms of one of the ministries. Um, but as you indicated, if people have so many challenges just to get to work in a morning in terms of transport and then traffic, um, by the time they get to work, you know, after right. two hours or three hours on the road or whatever, then, you know, productivity must be a challenge if they have to settle down. We are about to go on a break, but I want you to think about that um, for when we come back in terms of getting specifically now into our culture and our kinds of variables that affect productivity at mm -hmm. work and, of course, the stressors and the things that employees are coming to you at mm -hmm. Peepsil and also at the ECA to complain about um, in terms of getting to work and being productive. How to manage it. <laughs> right, how to manage it in a practical way. Mm -hmm. So we'll take a break and come back after the break. Do stay with us. Welcome back to Psychology Live, um, and I am here with my guest, which is Linda Besso from the Employers Consultative Association, and Ms. Leslie Tony, who is a counselor at um, Petrotrain EAP Services Limited, uh, whose head office is in San Fernando. And so we're talking about um, the psychology of the workplace and some of the stresses and challenges of um, working in contemporary Trinidad and Tobago given <laughs> traffic and other kinds of the whole psychosocial climate, including crime, mm -hmm. getting home late at night, mm -hmm. um, traveling if you don't have a car, even if you have a car, um, and some of the dangers. Um, and I think before the break, we were, um, I was asking in terms of, um, what was it, some of the challenges? Culture. Right? Mm -hmm. And the culture. Right, and the culture. So, what, 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 what are some of the issues from the ECA's perspective that you're seeing that are trending these days? Um, and I know we, we're in a year of elections and a lot of industrial <laughs> relations, that um, contracts that... Uh, I'm amazed that we're negotiating for 10 and 13 and 13 and 15, you know, which means that it's going to continue after the, 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 before the ink gets dry. But what are the, some of the challenges that employers are facing now, just in terms of productivity issues and, and employees trying to get to work, as you were saying earlier, and having to come long distances and dealing, I guess, with children and school and time off and all of that? Um, and you, we were talking about culture just before right. that. yes. And you just, you're just asking about productivity. The thing is, productivity is a culture. Right. And because I don't believe that Trinidad and Tobago um, possess that culture. There are individual companies, probably the international companies, the multinational mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. where productivity is one of the performance, the KPIs. Um, but generally, as a, as a, a nation, mm -hmm. we are not about productivity. I thought we, we had that some time ago in, the early, in our earlier working life. But yeah. um, at this time, I do not believe that it, it exists. I don't think it exists. 
um, productivity or the culture of productivity will exist in ideal situations. Yeah. We don't have an ideal situation. Yeah. I think the foreign companies, because they benchmark by international, international. standards mm -hmm. and metrics, they compare themselves with yes. international. But, you know, and I'm going to say, let me say this eh, as, as an organizational psychologist. I don't, we talk about productivity in this country, but why do we need to be productive? We have oil and gas coming out of the ground, and that fuels the economy. It may sound controversial, but we talk about productivity, but productive, why? But that, that, um, we, are seeing, mm -hmm. we are seeing at this time that mm -hmm. um, while we do boast of oil and gas, mm -hmm. it's, it's, if we're going to find ourselves in trouble with all the, 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 the in, what is happening internationally, the, the whole reduction in, um, in, the, in the price, yeah. in the price of oil and gas, yeah. the fact that we are not, our exports are not um, as, as needed as it used to in the past. Right. And only today, one of my HR people is saying, this is better is diversify or die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because even so, the um, oil and gas, while we, we do have, um, while we do get a lot, 60, some, 60 percent plus um, of our revenue comes from oil and gas. Yeah. Oil and gas only higher. 3% of our right, employment. Right, right. It's capital intensive. Yes, it's mm -hmm. capital intensive and so on. So mm -hmm. we need to really get into um, areas of more manufacturing, more uh, mm -hmm. diversify mm -hmm. so that we can really create jobs. Mm -hmm. Let me remind our, our viewers that um, our phone numbers are 675-8747 and 675-8749 where you can call in um, and post questions to our, our guests. Um, on the topic at hand, which is psychology in the workplace. So, Leslie, in terms of the EAP, mm -hmm. what are some of the, and uh, you know, I know it's, there's a confidentiality issue, but we're talking about generics. Mm -hmm. What are some of the issues that employees present? And I know you are specific in terms of being a clinician, but generally that people are seeing, um, have seen in the past and are mm -hmm. probably seeing now in terms of stress issues. Well, I, you. I want to go back to what you said. It sounded like you were being devil's advocate there with that question. <laughs> and I think, why, why should people be productive? Mm. Um, I come from a, a very behaviorist background. Mm. So a part of being in the work environment is also the, is, is the, is the culture of who you're working with, what is the ethos of the organization, right. mm. um, what are managers and directors doing, and how are they shaping the behavior as well. Mm. But people get a sense of satisfaction from doing something and being purposeful. So although we talk about the laissez-faire culture in Trinidad and Tobago and the idea that people don't work, there, there are always going to be in every environment the slackers yeah. and the non-slackers and then everybody who's affected by all of the <laughs> other things because of course work is not your entire life. Yeah. Um, so people are, one of the things that, that I've done a lot of with clients, with adults and children, is discuss sleep hygiene. Mm -hmm. How many hours are you getting? It used to, there used to be this idea that we needed eight hours a day. Um, there was a, a recent piece in the, uh, in the New York Times, which I read a lot of, mm -hmm. that it, they talked about actual academic research that was done looking at how people were functioning, and people may need less than that. They right. may need, some people, six or seven hours per night. Mm -hmm. But what I found in questioning clients as they come in, and even the children, is that people often get less than that. Yeah. And so your ability mm -hmm to stay on task, mm -hmm. concentrate, your, your tolerance for squabbles or things not going right at work, they're really lowered when you are tired. Mm -hmm. um, and people have to do that because they have to battle traffic in many of the places that, that mm -hmm. they are going to work. Mm -hmm. um, people are coming in to Peepsil sometimes because their children are having difficulty in school and they want to find mm -hmm. out what is wrong and what can we do about it? So one of the services we provide is psychological testing, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. sometimes known as psychoeducational testing. Mm -hmm. It's um, IQ tests and, and, and screenings for different disorders of childhood. So that, but that also suggests that you see employees and dependents also. Absolutely. Right. We okay. do. We mm -hmm. see, mo for the most, every company that is contracted with us, mm -hmm. their services mm -hmm. are for the employees and, and dependents. dependents. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Immediate and, family. 
Yes, and right. and and they work out in their contract period right. who mm -hmm. is is eligible, eligible for those mm -hmm. services. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing people who are saying, um, my child is not performing well in school, and I'm not sure why. And they keep trying with him, or I'm trying with him, or I'm trying with her, and we don't know. And so psychological testing is a service that we provide. Mm -hmm. We have um, young people because adolescence is the period of emergence of some disorders, particularly mood disorders. We have. And it is the period of angst, it's the period of, of these awful exams. Yeah. We have uh, young people coming in who are dealing with um, the emergence of, of mood disorders, with anxiety and depression. Those mm -hmm. are the ones that are most common. Mm -hmm. um, we've had people, a lot of people, who life is stressful and... Um, my relationship with my partner is stressful mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I want to come in to deal with this. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes relationship people are coming in, one of them is coming in, be not because they're coming in to work on the relationship but they're looking at how can I be a better partner or how can I get out of mm -hmm. this situation. But are people, uh, are people more open over the years because I know in, in, in our culture you talk psychology mm -hmm. and people thinks in terms, mm -hmm. which is one reason why we have this show, mm -hmm. to break down the barriers and the stereotypes and the stigma and mm -hmm. so on. Um, because one of the quotes that we use is that for any other part of your body, if you're sick, you can get treatment. Mm -hmm. But if it's the mind, it's a different story. Mm -hmm. You know, automatically there's a stigma. So over the years, um, at, at, at Petrotrin, are people more open to coming in and talking about behavioral psychological issues mm -hmm. think so. that are stressing them out in this very crazy, you know, technologically driven Yes, they yeah. are. That's the short Society. answer is yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. I have Which a friend who, who jokes and says, I, I do therapy, I do psychotherapy with oil men. And yeah. I'll say in contrast to <laughs> my previous experiences, which would have been hmm. in uh, public mental health in the United States, right, right. where I tended to have more women clients, hmm. I, and, and that's different too because it was severe mental illness. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, men tend to get mm -hmm. um, treated through um, penal systems. They get right, arrested right, right. when mm -hmm. they're sick like, like mm -hmm. women. But I get uh, a lot of men. Oil men? I get oil men, but, but you know, because we don't only serve the oil industry, industrial, I get, right. we, we serve, we have an agricultural agency, mm -hmm. we have um, university research based, mm -hmm. we have um, sanitation industry, we have a, r a broad range of industries. And the men are open. The men come in and I've had men come in and they are able to articulate their emotional distress. They're able to say um, they experienced some trauma. Maybe they were in an accident or someone died or mm -hmm. they were the victim of a violent crime or a robbery or something and they're able to articulate, I am shocked, I am sad, I am mm -hmm. angry. Mm -hmm. So they're able to speak with emotion words. And the fact that you're female doesn't inhibit them because we also have this whole macho you know, thing I, you know, I have about not males not being able to disclose and open up as well mm -hmm. to females or is that a myth now? Well the, the thing is most people do not talk the way therapists talk and they may not even talk the way therapists, some therapists, therapists right, like right. me yeah, yeah, yeah. want them to articulate the problem but the right. role of the therapist is to sort of shape um, the the dialogue mm -hmm. so that you can create the change that you mm -hmm. want to happen. You can mm -hmm. find out what is it people need to work on, what do they mm -hmm. want to focus on, yeah. and you can shape the dialogue. So yeah. even if they're coming in and they're externalizing or intellectualizing what's wrong, they talk, or they're talking, what people do a lot of is they they talk about how someone is distressing them. <laughs> and what I say all the time is, I wish I had the magical powers mm -hmm. to fix that person, but since he's not in the room or right. she's not here, right. I Let's can only work you. with you. Yeah. Let's see what we can change. Because what we know is, if you can change the way you cope with a problem, right. you can change the way you communicate with someone, mm -hmm. you can build your coping skills, mm -hmm. you can understand how you are uh, expressing your emotions or how you are defending against expressing your emotions. Mm -hmm. If you can do those things, you will have a different perspective and you'll be able to manage a difficult situation. And right. I tell people all of the time, we don't take away problems. And I, and I also say, I, don't, I try not to give advice. Right. But right. we can help you to really access what you're feeling. Pay attention mm -hmm. to it and let that mm -hmm. guide you and mm -hmm. teach you ways to cope with what you're doing. And men do that right. quite well. They, mm -hmm. they have a disadvantage mm -hmm. because they've social, been socialized not to do that as right. much. But they... They, uh, they learn quickly, right. even if they don't come in that way. Let me, let me take happens. a call. Let me take a call, Leslie. Um, mm -hmm. Hello, good night, caller. Hello, good evening. Yes, good afternoon, sir. 
Yes, good evening. Like the program so far. Thank you. I, Go ahead. I see. I see you all raised the point about people being in the penal system and having to deal with uh, emotions and stress and stuff like that. Right. But I wanted to talk about people in central services who may have an accident or may have to deal with somebody, lock up, grab somebody, and then go to work the next day. What what is there for them? Central services. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Central I, services. I didn't I didn't get the I didn't understand that. Tim, but but I want what. He's one talking about having to deal with somebody who may have gotten locked up, mm -hmm. cr criminal justice mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. and then have to go to work the following day. Right. Okay. So so there are two there because we get to see things from the individual's perspective yeah. and we also work for the organization we do right. trainings and workshops and things like that mm. one of the interventions that Peepsil has had a history of doing is called a critical incident stress debriefing critical incident, right. so mm. we you can understand the critical incident in terms of the oil field where awful things happen sometimes mm. someone dies Excellent. or is injured right. well, fortunately it's not very often right. but also um, I've had um, critical incident where someone died in the workplace or someone was hurt or someone was seriously injured and is not coming back to work for some time mm. or they, they were the victim of a violent crime and mm. then we're providing this CISD or CISM right. mm. Mm. for that person or that group of people mm. and the other people who are affected. And so, so what we're saying with that and mm. what employers are saying by offering it is we understand that if something tragic happens to you, you can't just you know dust yourself off right. and go to work and be functional the next day. Right. So you offer that and then you follow up with people a few weeks later and you see at that point mm. whether what we tell people is a lot of what you're experiencing is normal. Mm -hmm. The fact that you are angry or sad or having mm -hmm. difficulty concentrating mm -hmm. is normal in the context of what has happened to you. Yeah. If three weeks out or six weeks out, these mm -hmm. things aren't in this way, mm -hmm. let's talk about what we can do now individually with right. you. And, and so um, just for those who are watching, critical incident really has to deal with a major tragic or, or traumatic incident where there's fire, We've had fires recently last night, mm -hmm. last two nights. Um, your job has burned down, mm -hmm. the place has burned down, or crime. Um, and and the, the co-workers have to learn how to deal and cope mm -hmm. with the loss. And the loss could be physical in terms of the job, or a co-worker, mm -hmm. or a family member, etc., etc., et accident. Mm -hmm. um, and so how do they cope with that? Does the, does the ECA have any kind of facility or service, or you use providers no we we recommend the so, um eap provide you know we eap we, providers, providers right. yes yeah. independent we, that's not one of our areas right. that services that you yeah. provide mm -hmm. but over the years have you found linda that employers are more open i mean the, the fact is that all these things carry a cost and they mm -hmm. affect bottom line mm -hmm. um and we have now osh osh uh, you know occupational safety health act which means that once you have 25 or more employees Please, you have yeah, to have back. Committee. an OSH officer Committee. and you have to have all the different mm -hmm. protocols and so on in terms of safety at work. Um, how, how are both employers and employees coping with that from your perspective? Well, um, what, you, what you would find is that the larger companies, it's, it's yeah. almost automatic. Right. It's part of the, the, the system, the structure. Mm -hmm. My concern would be the smaller companies right. may not be able, it's not economic for those smaller companies. Yeah. Um, however, um, you still, if something happens, I think employers are really, they do have a heart, they do mm -hmm. have hearts, mm -hmm. and they, if they, they need, they would call us and ask us sometimes, and we would recommend, they, you know, you, you send the worker, mm -hmm. the employee, mm -hmm. or the employee family, it's usually a family, depending on the, on the nature of the issue, mm -hmm. to an EAP. Right. And, um, you know, you try to seek counseling because mm -hmm. if not, you would continue to have a problem yeah. because you have an unhappy worker. Right. You have a, a worker who is hurting and therefore there's no productivity there. So, right, right. <laughs> you know, one of the, one of the challenges that I, I, um, <laughs> I think is very much, it comes back to what you're talking about in terms of productivity, are some of the managerial inadequacies in terms of treating sometimes with employees as human beings who have family <laughs> life, stress, get into work, you know, relationship issues, mm -hmm. etc. The justice system, as, as the caller mm -hmm. mentioned, and having to deal with all that, but then come to work at 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock and then be productive and focused mm -hmm. on the job, Just whatever so it happen. may be. 
working with a piece of equipment or machinery, mm -hmm. right? Where if you slip, it could be, be yeah. you know, physically right. costly. Mm -hmm. um, so given all these challenges, would you say that the workplace is getting, from your more perspective again, yeah, more challenging? <laughs> You know? Yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And I mean, um, human resource managers now do have their hands filled. Right. But I still feel there's this, there, there is that, um, from my, my own experience in terms of the Employers Consultative Association's members, yeah. Yeah. they all have hearts right. and they all try to make the, the best of, of this, uh, whatever the mm -hmm. situation and whatever the demands are. Mm -hmm. But um, you would always have, you know, we just have a small... Um, 700 and something is just a right. drop in the ocean. We yeah. have over 28,000 28, employers, I think. And mm -hmm. you know what I mean? In so and that in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I must say that even I, I deal, I tend to deal with employees and supervisors. Right. And what I have found is that the supervisors I've dealt with very often they actually care about what's yeah, going on. Yes, they yeah, aren't yeah, just yeah. thinking they about. Mm -hmm. at all, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They aren't just thinking about. Okay, what's the bottom line? Mm -hmm. or the, they should be because that's their role. Mm -hmm. And and where where there isn't enough of that, because we're not just working with the employee, we're working with the company. Part of our role is to shape their behavior in terms of how can you push for the thing that's your priority right now, productivity, mm -hmm. and still be empathetic towards your worker. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. even if that's not happening, mm -hmm. there's a space for us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes dealing with the trauma that a worker is coping with, it involves educating them about what to expect and educating mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. person who's supervising them mm -hmm. about what to expect. So mm -hmm. I think that's a thing for supervisors who are listening and for mm -hmm. employees who are concerned about this to, to keep in mind that your supervisor is likely to understand or be understanding and mm -hmm. is open to hearing from this professional that they've called in for consultation right. about how to deal with the situation. Yeah. I believe too that um, with the uh, occupational safety and health, right. mm -hmm. that has to be, it, it, you know, I think work, um, work, the workplace has become much, much more um, safer, you know, uh, safer well, and alert and they're more attentive right. to the employees' um, safety and that kind of thing, you know, so they, right. they, they, they're the really empathetic. The law changes the culture to some <laughs> yes, degree. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, we have to go on another break, um, but when we come back, I want to talk, we, you know, in the news these days, we have, well, like, policemen can't strike, as far as I know, right? That's an essential service. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had issues, as everybody knows, in terms of police service, um, mm -hmm. nurses, even doctors. Mm -hmm. um, Sanitation workers, the dump, and so I on. I thought you were going to speak about the roadblock. Roadblock? <laughs> what roadblock? Road <laughs> <laughs> but we have to take a break. So we'll come back and talk about some of these industry relation issues and, and what we think um, are driving some of it. I mean, I have my own peculiar, peculiar take on it, um, which we'll talk about when we come back after the break. So stay with us on Psychology Live. Welcome back to Psychology Live. Let me remind you that um, for calls 675-8747 and 675-8749, you can call in and, and offer questions or comments or ask um, of our guests if you have any kinds of issues. And so we were talking before the break about um, all these different <laughs> um, overdue industrial relations, um, collective agreements, Right, postal workers, police, um, nurses, sanitation workers, swim call, and so on. How does that affect, um, Linda, the ECA in terms of, of negotiations? Even though they may be government, many of them, but I know they set the tone and benchmark sometimes for the private sector. How does that impact on you? Well, the public services, 14% recently, right. did, did in fact set the tone, eh? yeah. that was the benchmark. Right. So you find that if all the negotiations after that came in within that, in that figure. Right. Um, 
sometimes my concern is that why is it we do we allow because we're negotiating 2010 2013 yeah so by the time you settle this we're now another um, three years behind right. because we're now gone on to 14 15 and, and 16 yeah. and by the time that is over we've gone back you know it's 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 always and 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 that is one of the things i often wonder why is it we allow the um, negotiations to go beyond and why is it that workers must continue to live in the past yeah. with salaries of the past while the cost of living is just galloping right. ahead of us yeah. um and you look and all the, the um all the the areas of services that you call there are really it's government it's right. essential services in some some instances mm -hmm. but i really feel sorry for the people yeah people people are living as you said on salaries of 08 or yes. 09 yeah and negotiating for 10 you know i mean 15. so and by the time they get arrears they're negotiating now from 15 to 18. and you wonder well what is your real what what should they be really getting is 14 good we don't know. Yeah, yeah. And without statistics, without any, you know, information, right. you know, sometimes it's difficult to, to really pronounce on it. Yeah. And that brings up another, because, you know, I, I, I find it fascinating that we have this knee-jerk reaction when employees hold back their labor or, or they are unhappy on the job, whatever the job may be. It could be nurses, doctors, professionals, whatever. And they hold back their labor, which is the only thing some of them have to offer. Um, and because it inconveniences us, the working public, yeah. we, of course, react. Mm -hmm. um, and so there seems to be a lack of empathy or caring for the employee, whatever industry, and their situation. And that seems to be part of the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. Because we never put ourselves in the person's place. Right, the lack you of understand? empathy. Yeah. 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 And that's how we are. Yeah. I mean, you know... Um, I don't know, I suppose when people can't get what they want, they have to take the next action. And the next action is either we sick out, we whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not the greatest thing. It's not what yeah. we like for our country. Yeah. It impacts everything. It impacts right. service. It impacts productivity. It impacts everything. And, and, and uh, let's say the health sector. People are suffering. Right. But and dying. But then you can't be against the nurses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we, we have to take the whole. We have right. to look at the thing in a holistic yeah. way. I, I want to come to, to Leslie and ask if she gets those kind of issues, stress on the job. I'm just, <laughs> of the job is just pre pressuring me. Um, I can't cope, but I need to pay the bills, you know, the mortgage, the car note, the children at school, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. What kind of stress issues do, do people come, come, come to, to you about? Exactly like you've mentioned. Yeah. How do you manage? I, I, the job is stressful. I have 600 things to do during the day. Mm -hmm. They all must be done between 8 and 4, and mm -hmm. I am here at work. Most right. cases for me, people who are there from 7 to 4 or they're working shift, and they can't get away, and they have to come to work. Mm -hmm. And so how do I figure out everything? How do you balance? How, how, do, I, how do I balance? Work-life balance. Work -life yeah. balance. Mm -hmm. Actually, there have been a lot of requests for that type of, um, we call them educational outreaches. Programs, Other people workshops. ask for that kind mm -hmm. of training, that kind of talk mm -hmm. about how to balance work and, and all of the needs of their life. Mm -hmm. But one of the things is it's important to, at the very least, validate the frustration that people are feeling. Mm -hmm. Acknowledge it. Um, I come from an area where I've like, done a number of years of doing dialectical behavior therapy, mm -hmm. which is for a more traumatized uh, subset of people with a uh, more difficult disorder. But we yeah. use this term from DBT called radical acceptance, mm -hmm. to radically accept the truth of what your reality mm -hmm. is and to accept the feelings you're having about it. Mm -hmm. So validate what they're feeling when they're expressing the frustration, yes. And then figure out, okay, given that this is the reality, what can you do to adapt and cope with it? Mm -hmm. And people are coming in with those things all of the time. Mm -hmm. So it's really helping the individuals to adjust their behavior, accept their reality, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, mm -hmm. financially, in terms of the work situation, the stressors, mm -hmm. and then getting them to adapt their behaviors to deal with this reality yes. in a healthy fashion. Yes, in an adaptive coping In a healthy manner. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I tell people sometimes that, you know, stopping and getting the <laughs> beer and the alcohol and the, the, the social drinking, the wine at, <laughs> on afternoons is also, you know, it's also about coping, but it's in unhealthy moderation. coping. Yeah, it's unhealthy if it, it goes overboard. Yes. So it's about, it's about healthy coping strategies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, so we have all these different industrial relations challenges and, and, and so on. Um, any tips, and, and we are going to show some tips um, at the end of the show, mm -hmm. in terms of all the wellness issues, in terms of exercise and mm -hmm. time for yourself and meditation, prayer, whatever mm -hmm. is your, your, your go-to yep. in yeah, terms exactly. of unstressing exercise, the gym, the, the Zumba <laughs> you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> are employers providing more facilities um, as we evolve and develop and, and it, with a grasp that a healthy employee is a, a, a more sustainable and, and productive employee. I, be, I believe when you look at um, over time, yes, mm -hmm. employers have pre, um, provided, um, they continue to, to look right. for ways and means of making mm -hmm. their employees happy. Right. You know, so whatever, whatever is the in thing, mm -hmm. they try to be part of the in thing. Mm -hmm. So that um, they want to be the employer of choice at right. all times, you know, right. so that they look for all the ways and means of ensuring mm -hmm. that there's a, um, the environment, the workplace is a happy place. Right. One of the things we often say is... Um, Get a clear understanding of what your demands are mm -hmm. and an understanding. The employee or the employer? Well, in this case, for the employee. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at the individual level or the family level of mm -hmm. how to manage, how to have work-life balance, how to manage stress in your life, mm -hmm. have an inventory of your, what your demands are, mm -hmm. the things that everybody is pulling at you for, right. and what are your priorities. So that, again, uh, is you know, it's influenced by radical acceptance because mm -hmm. you have to decide, oh, I am not interested in this, it's not important to me or not. So what I'm hearing, you say that you, you try to help people say no in yes. terms of the priorities. <laughs> yes, because people Set have... priorities and learn to say no. People have difficulty saying no. There's a yeah. perception. Now, this is one of the things in, in terms of culture that, that, that I found. This is a culture where we have difficulty saying no, and we want right. to remain um, polite. We think it's impolite to say no. So help, particularly women. Women have been socialized. There's a lot of pressure on them mm. to say yes all of the time. But the reality is that sometimes you have to set a limit and say no. So helping people mm. to gain comfort with doing that mm -hmm. so figuring that out scheduling time for recreation mm -hmm. scheduling time for relaxation mm -hmm. schedule making sure that you adhere to some type of sleep pattern that is healthy right. and doing the things that you enjoy even the drinking and liming in mm -hmm. moderation right. so the other things don't slip yeah I mean we're running out of time we have less than a minute but I just wanted to very okay. quickly touch on the younger generation the Millennials <laughs> they may call them and attitudes to work any thoughts on that? What are you seeing, Linda, <laughs> Linda in the they're the, they're the, they're the, the yes people. I think, um, you know, we have to embrace everyone. Right. Um, we can't compare. Um, they are excited people. They are, they, 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 they are hyper people. They are energetic people. Mm. They want things now. Immediately. Immediately, or instant. They are into yeah. the, they born, they are born into the instant times and is yeah. instant coffee, instant everything. Yeah. So my feeling though is you give them the space, you understand them and right. you work with them. I think right. every generation is important right. and we have to work with them. Right. Any final thoughts, Leslie, in terms of the... Well, as a, as a younger person, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in in terms of young people, one of the things that's very different for, with them mm -hmm. is adapting to technology being integral to every aspect of their life, absolutely right. every aspect. Mm -hmm. So there too, you <laughs> figure out how to set limits. But I think there's multi generational learning going on, mm -hmm. and that is good. Mm -hmm. So I would say, in terms of tips on figuring out how to manage your stress or yeah. for how young people are dealing with things. Learn from as many different groups as you can and figure out ways that are healthy for you mm -hmm. to adapt to the situations that are present right. in your life. Well, unfortunately, we've run out of time. The time has gone by. We could <laughs> talk some more about this and a whole range of other things. One of the things I like to say, though, is that I find it very difficult um, when we have these industrial relation issues, as we see in the papers very often, and you put employees' backs against a wall. I don't think that any employer, government, private, or public sector should ever try to do that because it's very, very dangerous when you tell people that they don't have an option, especially mm -hmm. essential services. Mm -hmm. Then they find That's creative when they ways. They find an option. They find creative <laughs> ways to show their displeasure mm. and to withhold their labor or to mm -hmm. get sick. But thank you very much, ladies, for being on the set of Psychology Live and it having this conversation. It was interesting. Yes, really having this conversation yes. with us to be continued. So next week, we shall be um, talking about um, Indian Arrival Day and, and part of the psychology of transitions. So until next week, good night. Good night.